Welcome to Electra Online. In this video, we're going to explore why we need the Dirac Delta function. However, until we get into three dimensions, you may not see the immediate connection, but at least you'll see the shortcomings of some of our functions and some of our most known and well-used functions. So here, let's take a look at this. Let's say we have the function of the electric field of a point charge, which is equal to K, Q over R squared, in the r direction meaning the radial direction spherical direction everywhere outward so here we have a little drawing of that at least in two dimensions but you can imagine in all dimensions you see there's a point charge and the electric field is emanating away from that charge and of course as you go farther away the electric field diminishes in strength as the function one over r squared remember that k is equal to one over four pi epsilon sub naught now if we were to calculate the divergence of that, certainly you expect to see some value because the definition of the divergence is that there's an outflow, there's a source of the field and then an outflow of the field. You clearly see that if you draw a sphere around the point charge, that there is an emanation of that electric field from inside that sphere outward through the surface, through the walls of the sphere. So definitely we should get a value for the divergence when we take the divergence of that function. But of course, by now you may realize that may not be the case. Since we're dealing in spherical coordinates, here's the equation we need for the divergence of that function. However, since there's only an R component, a radial component of that, we then realize that we don't need these two portions of that equation. We only need to do this right here, which is nice. It makes it a lot easier. So this is therefore equal to one over R squared times a partial derivative with respect to R of R squared times the R component of the function, which in this case, that would be K Q over R squared. And right away, you see that the R squares cancel out. So you take the partial derivative with respect to r of k times q. But that's a constant. So here we get 1 over r squared times a partial derivative with respect to r of a constant. And of course, the derivative of a constant is equal to 0, which means that the divergence of that function, this well-known function, that's the first function that we learn really anywhere in ENM, that with the Coulomb's law, we realize that the divergence is equal to 0. Hmm. And we know that that can't possibly can be because it's clearly by the graph when we look at it that it shouldn't be zero. Well, there's a problem. And the problem stems forth from the, the fact that we have a point charge. And what is really the definition of a point charge? Physically, what does that mean? A point charge has zero volume. Kind of like the Dirac delta function, which is not defined until x becomes zero. There's no charge for a point charge until the position is at x equals zero, or in this case, r equals zero. Hmm. So there's something there that is very similar to a Dirac delta function. There's no definition of the charge until the radius becomes zero. And you can see that unless we have some means of dealing with that situation, we don't get the proper answer for the divergence. So therefore, we need something, sounds like a Dirac Delta function, in this case it will be a three-dimensional Dirac Delta function, to help us solve this problem. So now we're beginning to see some connection between something like this, where there's a point charge, meaning there's only a meaning of value when r equals zero, and then you say, well, what is the charge density at that location? Well, the charge density at that location would be infinite, because you have all that charge in a zero-volume position. That sounds a lot like a Dirac Delta function. So now we begin to see that there was actually a need for something like that to be able to be mathematically defined and then to be used to solve problems like this. And so you'll see in the videos to come how that will be done. Well, first we'll get a little bit more familiar with the Dirac Delta function and then we'll show you what it looks like in three dimensions. And then we'll show you how it's actually used in a situation like this to solve a very prickly problem that we have no way of solving in any other way. And that is how it's done. Prickly problem? A prickly problem. <laughs>